it's a great loss, but you know, at 23 years of age, it's, it's an incredible um, achievement what he's done in that time. Uh, the, Mr. Magner started kind of reminiscing and telling the stories, and we kind of learned that, well, obviously not in my time, but Sadler as well, as what he did and the success that he had was incredible, and they thought that that would never be matched again. And then for someone to come along, be it his son, uh, to come and surpass that, it's, it's, it's something that I, I think hopefully will happen again, but it's on rare that Lightning will strike a third time. And the void is there now. Um, there's a number of sons of his that are already making a massive impact in stud. I think already this year, Frankel is after having a breakout year um, here ourselves. We've got Australia, Glen Eagles, uh, Churchill looks like a really young, exciting stallion as well. And then we've got so many other horses in the pipeline out of Galileo Mares, and we've already saw that influence through Night of Thunder out of a Galileo Mare. So, We've got some really exciting young horses around the place, like Saxon Warrior, and we've got a lot of things to look forward to in the pipeline, and someone somewhere is going to fill that void, and, and hopefully it's here. And Mark, in the stallion yard this morning, we've seen Australia looking fantastic. He's a 10-year-old now, obviously, since, uh, since he's gone to stud. He's done really well, and uh, rolling back to that win in the Judmont International, I looked at the video this morning, beating the Grey Gadsby, he couldn't have done it any easier. No, very impressive. Uh, he was unlucky not to win a guineas and I think he showed the speed there in the race where he came from, Australia came from the rear to, to go by and win the uh, race and go by the French Derby winner. But of course he ended up in champion three-year-old Colt in the world that year. Um, the International Judgment International, it's a, it's a tremendous stallion making race and when you think about the three-year-olds have won that race before, you're going back to Giants Causeway, see the stars, so it's, you see the influence that they've had in the breed already. Um, and hopefully St. Mark's Basilic as a three-year-old <laughs> can go and, and win it this year and, and continue on that legacy. In the short period of time he's here, he's got off to an unbelievable start. He's sired Breeders' Cup winner, he's sired a Classic winner, Gane winners, uh, Grand Prix de Paris winner. So he's had a fantastic start to his stud career here um, and it's, it's really exciting. We've got then the two-year-old Point Lonsdale, um, won at Royal Ascot this year and is the favourite for the, the 2,000 guineas in the Derby next year. So he's a really interesting horse. Um, He's by a derby winner, he's out of an Oaks winner and he won a derby winner, his derby winner himself. So he's got a lovely profile as a stallion as well. So he, he's a horse that we think is going to have a real big future. And for such a young stallion, he's, he's one of the leading sires in Europe already for stakes winners. And you could see that this morning, he's got a great temperament. He had it when he was racing and he's let down really well. And he's transferring that speed and stamina to his progeny. Yeah, definitely. Um, like to, to have a Royal Ascot winner as a two-year-old, like it's, it's so early in our season. So it really showed his, his speed. And, even to be around him as a horse, he's very like his father. They have the same uh, tendency where they like their gums rubbed, which is not a typical tendency for a stallion, but he's a very kind of placid uh, creature, just like Galileo was as well. So he's, a, he's, he's in the mold of his father, even if he, he's a, obviously he's a chestnut, but he, he's very much in the mold of his father in every other sense of the word. And Mark, uh, ahead of this year, this year's Coolmore Nuntorp Wooden Bassett Stakes, of course, a fantastic race in its own right. Uh, Wooden Bassett, of course, is a new addition to the stallion ranks here at Coolmore. Yeah, yeah he's a very exciting stallion. Um, unfortunately, you couldn't see him today. He's, he's in Australia at the moment, but the book of mares that he got here has been incredible. I was looking it up um, last week, actually. He, he covered in his book this year, he covered the previous Irish, English and French Oaks winner. So the standard of mare that he got has been incredible. Um, we've obviously a lot of Galileo mares to go to war with and he seems like a perfect fit for them obviously with the cross so you can see Chindit and that sort of horse has been produced from it already um, he's a really exciting young horse and versatile as well um, he can get an Abbey winner he gets a lot of class he's got toughness you see Adaria is there as a filly that just keeps turning up and fighting her fight and then we've got of course the sta standard horse that he can produce and that's Almanzor um, I think everyone remembered the day in Leopardstown when he turned around the bend <coughs> wide and, and, and last and how he came by a field of, I think there was eight or nine Group 1 winners in the race that day. And of course, it's uh, almost things come full circle with Wooden Bassett. He won the sales race at York prior to going on, of course, to land that famous victory in the Group 1, John Lagader on Arc Day. And uh, to have the race named after him, Nuntorp, it's a uh, case of the circle closing. Yeah, and it shows the pride of place that he has here. He's a very interesting horse, actually, when you, you look at his life cycle. He, he went to stud, he was a champion two-year-old in France. He, he, he got off to a kind of a, we'd say a mixed reception and his first crop wasn't overly well received when he went to stud. So he only got 23 foals from that crop. But from that crop, he was able to produce the, the likes of Almanzor. And each year he just kept get, getting better and better and he was upgrading mares and putting class into them. He's, he's a classic sire. Um, he's a sire of sprinters, sire of middle distance and a sire of champions most importantly. 
and he's a perfect outcross for a lot of families. And poor, yeah, especially around here, we've got so much uh, Sadler as well as uh, Galileo Blood. Um, he works so well with that, and he, he, he works with a lot of different lines as well. There, there seems to be no emerging nick or, or, or cross that seems to immediately work when he seems to just work with everything. But the one thing is, is, is that he always consistent, is that he puts class and upgrades his mares. Exciting times. Yeah, yeah, and and he's going to have great opportunities here. And um, I know Mr. Magna recently said like that the great stallions take their chances, and he's definitely came in here and he's taken his chances, and and he has always taken his chances when he when they were presented. So that's always a, a real good sign of a stallion, and, and he's definitely ticked that box. And Mark, ahead of this year's Coolmore Wooden Bass and Nuntorp Stakes, say uh, the Coolmore ownership looks likely to be represented by Golden Pal, of course, trained by Wesley Ward. We know him best over this side of the world for being second in Norfolk in 2020. Yeah, hugely exciting horse. Um, extremely fast. He came back this year, <clears throat> won in Saratoga, um, blistered through the field and, and set a ferocious pace. So we're really excited about him. He's by our own stallion, Uncle Mo, stands in Ashford. Um, Uncle Mo's first crop of the, the sons of his had their first crop winners last year, uh, runners last year, and in the in the freshman sire table, like he treated the top four stallions in and led by Nyquist. So hugely exciting sire, hugely exciting sire of sires, and Golden Pal uh, looks like he's he's cutting that mold of a Wesley type. Well, also obviously we had a lot of success here with Nona Never, who was trained by Wesley. So this guy is, looks very much in the mold, and I'm looking forward to seeing him in 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 New York, and I'm trying to catch him. Uncle Bo is a bit of a left field sire initially. Yeah, he, he's by Indian Charlie and um, wouldn't be overly known in this part of the world, but he, he's been an unbelievable stallion in America. He's a real just source of quality and, and gets colds, fillies, everything. He, he's just a brilliant stallion. He's, he stands for six figures in America and he's, he's very popular at the sales, very popular in the breeding shed, owner breeders, commercial breeders. He takes every box.